was very impressed by the uh, four council members that was here, and especially the three new council members, seeing the passion uh, that they have. The second segment that we have today is going to be on, on school districts. And you're probably thinking that, are they just as important? And the answer is definitely yes. I'm going to keep the same format that we had uh, today. And um, I'm going to have each of the um, trustees um, do an introduction, less than five minutes, please. And then we'll do a round of uh, questions. Um, the first one I'd like to bring up is uh, Anthony Lee. Anthony is on um, the Contra Costa Community College trustee and uh, Andy Lee. Um, need to have my coffee this morning. <laughs> and uh, anyone coming up and, uh, and say a little bit. Okay, it's on? Okay. Thank you. Gilbert, and uh, also thank you CLUSA and Anthony, and uh, thank you Ding Ding TV and uh, Papa folks and for organizing the event. And so my name is Andy Lee. Uh, I came to the U.S. in 1996, so it's 22 years. And uh, now I'm the Contra Costa Community College Board, and I was very lucky they elect me as a vice president. So first, uh, why I'm running. You know, the interesting thing is a lot of people here know me. I told people many times, I don't want to run. You know, so much I know, it's kind of a like big step move forward. Is I always tell other people I don't want to run. This is why I'm running. It's all from a conversation back in 2017 in November. I have friends, so we have a coffee. At the end, she asked me, hey, Andy, you know what? I know you are very active in the civic world, and uh, I know uh, Papa is very active. And let's go through the seat opening and talk about the election in 2018. Then we told her, I said, okay. We talked. And then in the middle, she told me, you know what, Andy, this is a community college board, and the guy there is not running to get reelected. Are you interested at that time? I told her, no, I'm not interested. Two weeks later, there's another, guy, another student suicide in my community. I also told my friends, you know, I have two young kids, I told my friends, I don't want to see things happen in Gang Hai there, happen in my community in Saramon. But at that time, I know that was the second student suicide. Later, I learned for that school year, for the past school year, we lost five students. So at that time, I started to think about, you know what? If my, like my kids living in that environment, I mean, it's, they will feel the stress and uh, they will not be happy. After discussing with the family, then I decide to run. Um, so what's the, what's the question from the Anthony? Is it like a high point of the running? Uh, of course, uh, I don't remember, it's uh, like Asia says, it's, uh, when you learned you're the winner, you are very happy, and that's definitely the kind of a good time, I think, for everybody, it's like the first time, right, Jerry? Um, but I think this reminds me of uh, like more than 20 years ago when I started GRE, and I spent like uh, five months, the primary concentrate in starting GRE, and uh, after I finished the GRE test, I found, you know what? I really enjoy the process. And uh, at that time, I don't think about anything else. Just study GRE. <laughs> this time, I think I feel the same thing is, I feel the whole process. You run your campaign. I learn a lot. I meet a lot of good friends and, uh, and talk with many good uh, like uh, voters, and uh, I really enjoy the time with them. Although it's winning is important, but like uh, uh, Sabina said, is uh, the whole process is good. And uh, uh, what else? Anthony, the question you asked before, <laughs> I try to think Pretty about. Pretty much, that. you covered it. You covered it. I covered it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot, Andy. And what we're really proud of uh, Andy Lee is that he is a person who outreach uh, to other folks. 
uh, not only at Rush to Benny, but he also outreached to me, and he has dialed many phone calls to me just asking for advice. Am I doing the right thing? And I think one important thing to be a candidate is to make sure that you pick up a mentor or various mentors and really um, call them out, talk to them, or even if they're busy, hey, what's another good time uh, to call? And the synergy between me and him, him being Contra Costa County, me being Santa Clara County, community college is very different uh, because it is higher education, which is uh, post K through 12. Um, but I can see the success stories that is out in Alameda County and Contra Costa County, being the first Chinese American, Asian American elected on the College Board Trustee in Contra Costa. But we have many success stories in Silicon uh, Valley. And it's really my honor to introduce the next three uh, trustees. And we'll start out with uh, Rosa Kim, who's from the Fremont Union High School District. And we see Pakistani, we see Afghan, and we see another rising community group, which is um, Rosa Kim. And we see with the LA uh, council member, David Rue, who came up. And then we have, and Rosa's down the second uh, Korean American that has been elected to the county, and I'm really proud of her um, success. Rosa? Hello, everyone. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to thank you to Papa to give us a um, great opportunity and to give me a great opportunity to share my experience with you uh, all here. Uh, yeah, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, my name is Rosa Kim, and I was born in Seoul, Korea, and my, I moved to the States in 2000. Um, I raised my two kids here in the States, uh, and my experience is well, as a parent of two kids, uh, I wanted to, you know, give my kids uh, a pride in their cultural identity. So I started working at a local um, Korean school, uh, which was, uh, which is the uh, biggest Korean school in the States with over 1,000 students. Uh, well, I was a teacher first, and then uh, I became a vice principal and principal. So for the past 10 years, um, as an educator, um, uh, my priority was uh, giving them uh, more pride. I mean, through um, you know, me teaching their cultural identity, uh, and not just language, history and cultural knowledge, and let them have really you know, have a confidence um, as an Asian American uh, in growing up in the States. And af um, through those experience, uh, I thought, okay, so they have, I mean, pride, and then they have you know, knowledge about their cultural identity, and then what is the next step? I thought they need to you know, contribute their local community with their pride and their knowledge, and then work for the community. I think that was uh, their, I mean, the next step, and you know, always making action is much better than just talking. So I decided, I mean, to challenge, uh, to run for mm, as a school board member, and then uh, showing them you need to challenge yourself, and then, well, you know, contribute. I mean, the local community. So that was the one of the reasons I want I wanted to, uh, you know, work, contribute in the community, and show them a role model to you know, help their community. And then also, um, we have many high school students volunteers in our, our language school, and they're actually really good schools. They have really good grades, but at the same time, they're under very you know, emotional or mm, mental stress because their focus is very, I mean, academic stuff. But I think they need to learn more than just academics, so they need to know how to you know, be a really, um, how can I say that? I mean, uh, be a better person, and then uh, they need to be happy. And actually, high school uh, period is really important because my first one, my first, uh, my first one is a college student, and I could see, um, you know, many college students they don't know about how to handle their stress. So many of them they drink alcohol a lot. And um, I think our high school period, we need to teach them, I mean, how to, um, you know, I mean, 
relieve their stress, like uh, through um, emotional wellness program and lots of mentoring service. So I thought, oh, maybe, I mean, as a school board member, I can connect uh, parents' wish and students' well, uh, emotional and mental wellness, uh, their needs, I mean, with the uh, district leadership. So that was, I mean, the one other reason, I mean, I decided to run for the school, uh, for the school board. And I think, <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Rosa. Um, the next person I want to bring up, because oh, you have a seat, Rosa. Next person I want to bring up is uh, Jerry Liu. Jerry Liu ran for the Cupertino Union uh, School Board. I actually helped him on his uh, campaign. I'm very proud uh, of him getting um, elected, and he has numerous stories to tell us. All right, thank you, Gilbert. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jerry Liu. I was just uh, newly elected to the Cupertino Union School District Board. Um, before I start, I just wanted to thank the um, uh, thank a Papa and uh, Civic uh, Leadership USA and Ding Ding TV for the opportunity to be here with all of you today. Um, I thought maybe I'll start with a short biography. Um, so I was born in Taiwan. Um, I uh, came here when I was nine with my family. So uh, my parents were in their 40s when they came. So they weren't coming here for sort of these nice high-tech high jobs. My dad was an accountant. Uh, my mom was a teacher. Um, so I grew up in Texas, um, you know, went through the whole ESL thing, though they didn't really call it ESL back then, and there wasn't much of a program. Um, I um, went to school on the East Coast at Cornell University, I studied engineering, and then after graduation, I came out here to the West Coast. And so right now, I run a research lab at a major tech company. Um, in terms of why I ran, so my family moved to Cupertino in 2011 or 12. It's when my, um, so Cupertino is known for its uh, the academic performance, right, in the school district. And so we really moved to Cupertino for the school. So, so I, I never thought back then, if you were to ask me, that I end up on the school board for Cupertino. And the, the reason I, I ran is, you know, I was very proud of being in Cupertino. We have saved our money and we barely squeezed in there. And, and I started volunteering in their kindergarten classroom. And you know how these things are. If you, when you volunteer, you, you you do something, and then people ask you to volunteer. Then you're you're doing this. You're running the book fair. And then as I started volunteering more and more and serving on these different advisory committees, I you know you start seeing places where you want to see change. Um, but then you also recognize as a volunteer, or even as an advisor, there's only so much you can influence. And so that's um, and so that was a big part in me deciding to run. And I actually ran for a city council uh, two years ago in 2016. And, and the thing with running a campaign is it's really a self-discovery process, right? You, because people ask you, what do you believe in? And you say it over and over, and, you're, and, and you really hone that message. And the thing that I learned about myself in 2016 is when I tell people, people say, what did you do? And I say, well, gosh, I, I'm the PTA president, and I'm the PTA, I'm the school site council president, I run the library foundation, and, I'm doing, and, and people are like, well, you know, you, you really should be running for school board. And then and I started, and, and I think the thing for me that I learned in 16 is I really care a lot more about the schools than, you know, and say, for instance, some of the development issues. And so I, uh, so that was a big part in running. Um, in terms of the challenges, I think I agree um, with, uh, you know, I think a number of folks have touched on money. I mean, that's the key thing. But I think for me also, it was a time away from family. I have two girls, a 12 and a 10-year-old. They're both in the district. And, you know, I have a full-time job. And so, you know, honestly, a lot of my campaign uh, activities got done after 9.30 p.m. when my kids are asleep and on weekends when I would go canvassing. And so there was a lot of time away from the family. And so that was something that um, I, I think we had to work through. I'm very so, uh, grateful for my family's support. And, and I think another challenge in thinking about it is to, is to sort of educate the, um, the, the community on the school issues, right? Because school district, a lot of times, is a down ticket um, race, right? And people are just like, oh, the schools are fine. And the thing with Cupertino, I'll share an interesting statistic with you, OK? So um, it's the students, 75% Asian. 75% of the students are Asian, but only a third of the voters are Asian. And so what happens is you have this dichotomy of people who, who have the power to vote don't necessarily um, have kids in the schools, and so it, there's an extra step in educating them on what are the issues with the schools. Um, yeah, and I think just in terms of next steps, as Gilbert said, very grateful for his help on the campaign, or never would have uh, 
than where I am, be where I am without his help. And so I'm very cognizant of sort of realizing that the district was here before I got here. It'll be here after I leave. And I'm really just, you know, a guy with a baton in a long race, right? And so I'm all excited about serving my next four years, but I'm also thinking about how do we fill the pipeline, right, with uh, folks so that after I'm done with my turn that we can, um, I can have a, a baton to pass on to someone who can take the district to a greater heights. All right, so with that, I'll just conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. So Jerry hit on a really good uh, note on how do you balance uh, yourself during the campaign. We'll go uh, further in. Um, the last, and I say the best for the last, is Naomi Matsumoto, uh, who's also ran for the Fremont Union High School District, been very active in the city of uh, Cupertino. And um, if you can present yourself. Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to Papa and the um, Civic Leadership USA and to Ding Ding TV for hosting us today. I am someone who um, works, um, likes to work behind the scenes, so being up in front of a microphone is really difficult for me. And so um, just to give you my life journey, one of the things that I think is really exciting about America is the fact that we have uh, first generation um, candidates to those who, um, like me, have been in this country for over uh, 100 years. And so I'm a third generation Japanese American, and uh, my children are fourth, fifth generation uh, Japanese Korean American. And so I think that this is great and wonderful and speaks to the diversity and the inclusion of our country, but it also speaks to the lack of inclusion and diversity in our country and, and, and representation in many ways. I am a social worker by profession and have been a social justice advocate um, all my life. I've um, a nonprofit executive, and so um, I have juggled being a um, working full-time, being a professional volunteer, and being a, a family person, being a mom to three children um, during my campaign. And so there were things that I did have to give up, because, uh, things that I was very passionate about. Um, I, I volunteer in the, the jails, and I had to give that up because I needed to uh, focus on my campaign. Um, but um, going back to, uh, this speaks to my not being comfortable here, I ramble on something. Um, Going back to why I ran, um, I have always, as I've said, been very active in my community and have supported um, many different candidates in many ways. And one of the things that has that I've seen in our um, cities is that I live in the city of Sunnyvale, and up until this year or or the last couple of years, we have had no Asian Pacific Islander representation until Mason Fong just got on. I mean, there were a couple of other candidates. Uh, Otto Lee, I mean, not candidates, but um, elected officials, Otto Lee and um, David, uh, I mean, sorry, Dennis Chu, who were on there before. But being a city that is over 50% Asian, um, not having that representation is really um, alarming to me. And our school board, currently the Sunnyvale School District, has no Asian representation on the school board. And when they had the opportunity to pick and and, and no uh, people of color on the school board. And when they had an opportunity to make an appointment, they chose to, there were um, three or four different people of color candidates. They chose not to appoint any of them. And so for me, it has been very important that our voices are heard. Uh, I, I believe um, what was said before, that it is about the issues, but it also is about the representation and making sure that all of our communities are heard and all of our communities are represented. And so that is why I chose to run. And Naomi, can you mention uh, really briefly, um, both of us did an interview process for the Board of Education versus campaigning. What do you like better, okay. interview process or campaigning? Okay, that, I, I did forget. So prior, okay. So prior to running for the school board, I did apply for, um, to be appointed to the Santa Clara Board of Education when Dr. Michael Chang had to step down. And um, I, knew, I knew that I was gonna have a tough time um, in that um, appointment process because I was, uh, the um, other candidates were two former mayors who were very well known and uh, the three of, three of us who were not as well known. But, um, I really enjoyed the process, and that's what 
kind of pushed me over to decide to run for office. Um, it, it really made me have to solidify what my issues and platform was going to be about. And I had to sit in front of a group of people to be interviewed publicly um, uh, along with the other candidates. But I can tell you um, one of the... Um, one of my good friends, who's also an elected official, had told me, it is so much better to run than to be appointed. It is so much harder to run than to be appointed. But it is uh, because you know that you were able to get, you, it's only five people making a decision on who sits on that, um, on that seat, but you have to get 30,000 votes and, uh, to be able to run and get your message out and to know that those are the people that are supporting the issues that you are running on. And what Naomi is talking about is that there's two opportunities to run for office. Number one is you can go through the regular process in November and file a petition to run. And the second one is to run for an appointed position if there was a seat that was open. So both Naomi and I ran for the County Board of Education. And I think for some Asian Americans, um, English is my native language, our native languages and some of them English is not their native languages, but it's just very nerve wracking to sit, to stand in front of a board, answers these really tough questionings. And it, I think for both of us, we were like very, very uh, nervous, but they were very um, understanding. And I agree with Naomi, I prefer to do uh, campaigning. Um, before I ask any questions out there, I wanna kind of be more uh, specific. And can you tell us, uh, no, why did you want to run? When did you decide to run? How do you put together your team or did not put together a team? And what was your key to your success? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll start. Um, I'm sorry, the question is when did I? Yeah, when, when did you decide that you wanted to run? How did you put together your campaign right. uh, team? Did you follow your plan or strategy? <laughs> right, um, so it, it's probably, um, you know, what, the sort of pulling the, pulling the trigger mentally, was I would say probably a year, a year before the election. So maybe a little less than a year, let's say after the new year. Because I think a lot of folks who do this, you take winter break to really think about, you know, do I want to come in my year to this? And I think for me, that's mentally when I decided I wanted to do this. Um, I was very, uh, I think, fortunate in knowing folks like Gilbert who um, actually really helped me. Because, you know, politics, if you think about it, it it's, it's really a people business. And it's about relationships. And even if you get elected, if you work alone, you can't really get anything done. You're really part of a bigger team. And so I think just through uh, my um, previous campaign in 2016, having uh, met and worked with people like Gilbert and the folks in the community, because I, I think I've been out there once, and so people sort of knew what I stood for. The team came together pretty quickly, just because I think, uh, you know, like I said, people knew where I was. And But I think a big part of it uh, was having um, experienced mentors. Uh, uh, Gilbert is a key one. I'm not just saying that because he's here. He's really, really good um, at really to put the team together. Thank you. And as we go down the list, tell me how you found your volunteers. This mysteriously happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the first, uh, when I did make a decision, uh, well, actually, I wanted to uh, contribute more in the local community. And then actually, one of my former school board members, uh, he is also a good friend of me for, you know, over 10 years. And he actually commanded me to run for the position, school board position. Uh, but it took time to convince myself that I, you know, I can contribute uh, in the community as a school board member. So ended up, I registered as a candidate almost on the last day of the uh, candidate nomination period. So that was really challenging for me because uh, I think if I could have more time to reach out to more members in the community, uh, I could have more endorsement and <laughs> more support. Yeah, but I did my best. Uh, and the, I think I can tell, I'd like to mention four things. Uh, first, uh, I would like, as a parent, uh, and then, you know, I, my son is in the district as a student, so I wanted to uh, implant more students' ideas in planning my campaigning. So I, first I did uh, the online student um, survey and then listen to their uh, thoughts about their district and their schools, and it was really helpful 
for me in planning uh, my strategy and my priority. And then the second was I met with uh, the school board members, including my district and other district and feeder district. So I could have more practical team tips and more inform practical information about the role of school board members. And it, well, actually they didn't endorse me because they decided to endorse other candidates, but still uh, their experience and they're willingly share the experience and it was really helpful for me. And then the third one was, um, Preparing for the public uh, candidate forums and attending them was really helpful because I could study and learn more about the district and uh, the current issues. And it was helpful, very helpful to you know prepare, I mean, for my role as a school board member. And then lastly, uh, I did my best to, uh, in reaching out to uh, the community members. I work uh, in the precinct with my volunteers and I met with a group of uh, the community members and they gave me what they want uh, from the district and from their school. And I'm also a parent, I'm also an uh, immigrant. I, I was not uh, raised, I was not educated in the States. So they thought, I mean, I am representing, I mean, some of them, they are not uh, educated in the States, but they wanted to educate their children very well to be successful in the States. So I'm, you know, I'm like that. So, I'm, so I have a same perspective uh, like you know, many immigrant parents. So I think it was really learning experience for me. And then I felt really happy. I mean, I could represent their, you know, a view. And uh, for volunteers, uh, well, I, I was very fortunate. Uh, I didn't have many volunteers, but my volunteers were very enthusiastic, including my husband. So <laughs> uh, I, I try to work at almost every day with my volunteers and they have their neighbors. So they yeah, reach out to their neighbors. And then, uh, well, it was not easy uh, to work in the prison because sometimes they are not nice. I mean, <laughs> but some, most of them, they are really, you know, encouraging me. Yeah. And then some of them, they felt, oh, oh I'm really proud. I mean, you are parents and you are Asian American, but, but yeah, you, you know, had courage to, you know, run. So it was a yeah, really, really joyful moment, actually. I mean, meeting, I mean, other people, I mean, my, yeah, neighbor, I mean, they are really supporting me, I can tell. So. For the next time, I will work more in the racing, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Rosa. What really makes Rosa really special is that Rosa and I knew each other when I was a council member and she was a principal at a foreign language uh, school. And she decided at the very last minute uh, to run. And people, and just like this, um, just the other San Ramon candidate who challenged two incumbents who came really fresh and really had that strong passion. Rosa said that, you know, I'll give it a try. I think I can do it. And um, she didn't really outreach toward getting support or endorsements until after she filed. And a lot of her other candidates like Naomi and some other folks have already uh, given away their endorsement. And we're thinking that, oh, maybe, you know, Rosa will we'll wait for uh, the next time. But that night when I saw the uh, results, um, it was a very surprising results to see uh, her within the, uh, the top three and everything. Uh, Andy? Uh, for me, is uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, I learned this position is open at the end of uh, November in 2017. And uh, so two weeks later, kind of three weeks later, I decided to run. But another two weeks later, just right before the Christmas, my mom was diagnosed uh, with uh, stage four lung cancer. And uh, she lost her whole lungs. At that time, you know, I said, I will stop everything. I don't want to do it. Fortunately, her, aunts, uh, her, uh, her cancer is not curable, but as uh, stoppable. So they have a medicine. So at the end of January, kind of we have a medicine target that cancer is kind of she's in st stable condition. At that time, we were told she only has uh, six months left, but now she's still living with us, so very fortunately. And uh, so I didn't announce my like uh, running until uh, February. So a few things I'd like to emphasize is uh, to start early. I think it may be different from your story. I think I got a lot of benefit from starting uh, early. And because I start early, I collect the endorsement much earlier. And by the time my opponent decides to really join this race, there's not much people they can get the endorsement. And uh, also I raise tons of money because I start early. And uh, another thing is uh, 
I went to every single uh, college board meeting. I attend that meeting, so I learned this process, how they work really, really well. So by the time uh, in like uh, September, November, when we do the debate, because I, I was there, I learned this, I know this, and uh, my answer is pretty good. Uh, another thing I feel uh, I like to share with the community is, uh, I think that some people here know, uh, back in 2014, I, uh, along with uh, several people here, like Marsha, Nancy, and a uh, few other people, I think we started a Papa, uh, uh, Holly here, we started a Papa Travelli chapter, and so I'm the founding president. Also, I'm involved in the Rotary. Uh, Sabina, Nancy is our Rotary Club member, and I'm um, very active in the committee. I'm appointed uh, city commission, uh, school uh, committee member, and uh, even county. By heavily involved in this, and uh, one thing I benefit is I know a lot of people. I already build a network. A lot of people know me. Another thing I feel is uh, by doing nonprofit, I learn a lot. I learned the leadership, I learned how to organize the event. I still remember like uh, I had a kickoff in April, I think you were there, right, Gilbert? And uh, when I organized the event, I said, oh, this is easy, because I have done this like uh, 10 times here. So I know what I need, uh, who to contact, who to put in. Another thing is uh, like volunteer. I mean, a papa has a lot of volunteer. We cannot use a volunteer as uh, uh, under a papa, but they're my friends. You know, why tell them I'm running? They say they'll be happy kind of to help me. Uh, the third thing I would like to share here is uh, be authentic. And just like I told you before, I'm not thinking about running. And uh, the main reason for me to run, I want to reduce the stress within the community. I've been working in those fields for years. So people know me. Let me tell you a story. That's uh, at the beginning of uh, 2018. So some of our friends know I may run, and as, uh, I think, uh, uh, Sabina, you may know uh, Cassie Chiverton. She is the executive director of uh, um, Discovery Council. And uh, at that time, in late January in the 2018, I attended uh, her uh, quarterly uh, council meeting. And at that time, she was very excited. She told me, hey, you know what, Andy? I met the dean of the community college. And uh, you know, community college is a great work, great uh, school, I mean, college, and you need to let your community know the kids does not need to, or students does, do not need to, like, uh, compete for many APs or OAs. They can go to community college, they can save money, have much higher chance to go to better college. At that time, I was smiling and nodding. At the end, I told her, you know what? Because of that, I'm thinking about running for the community college board. He told, she told, I still remember she told me three things. She said, okay, I'll support you. Second thing, I'll open my house for your fundraising. Third thing, can I join your campaign team? So, you know, by working with nonprofit, by working with uh, the community to reduce stress, I already know those people. Those people know me. When I tell them I'm running the, this community college board and I to help students using community college to reduce the stress, they all agree with me. They all want to work with me, support me. Um, I decided to run the night um, of the, when they made the decision on who was going to be appointed to the C County Board of Education. As soon as I got into my car, after they announced the winner, um, I got a group text uh, from my friend saying, okay, now you have to run for the next office. And, and um, I texted back, can you let me lick my wounds first before I <laughs> make a decision? But um, at that point, I, that was in January. And, um, and then I started to work on um, building a campaign. Unfortunately, um, as life happens, my uh, father-in-law became ill and he passed away during that time. And so although I was working uh, behind the scenes, I couldn't make a public announcement. Um, uh, out of respect to him and so even though I would have liked to have a kickoff in uh, July or August I had to wait till September to do do that and so I, I was way behind I know m uh, my friends who are um, elected officials were you know pushing me saying you're you're um, have you done this have you done that and I I just couldn't just because of I needed to t take care of family first um, but with that um, I did um, 
have to think strategically. Luckily, um, in our school district, there were only five high schools, and so uh, it made it easier, and, and I had to find key people in each of those high schools that would be my ally, ally or advocate and carry that voice for me. And so uh, those who I knew that were active in PTSA or in the school uh, clubs and different types of things. And luckily, uh, my children are very involved in the community also. Um, and so because of their involvement, I had a lot of um, support too. They play uh, Tri-City, which is the Asian American uh, basketball and um, um, uh, volleyball and social club. And so with that, we had a wide range of um, community members who knew my family because of my kids. And, and then um, I ran a very grassroots campaign. I didn't, um, I, I knew I had a target. Everyone told me I had to raise fifteen to $20,000. And so I knew that that's what I had to work for. Um, I, um, unfortunately, a lot of the people that I knew who were really uh, campaign savvy were all either running for office or supporting other people, and so they weren't able to help me, so I had to, my husband was my treasurer, or I, I'm sorry, my campaign manager, I was my own treasurer, but um, I, I was lucky to have the key people who were um, um, consulting with me on the side, like Gilbert and, and other people helping me when I had questions. Um, and so that was um, very helpful for me. And then, um, I think, did I cover everything? Okay, thanks. So Naomi did a very good job in, in that. Um, she uh, ran for the party position for Sunnyvale Elementary and unfortunately didn't get it. She ran for the Santa Clara County Board of Education that we both uh, ran for and she bumped me out, but we both didn't uh, get it. And finally she ran for the Fremont Union High School District. And it's a theme that we hear is that you gotta continue and continue um, to kind of get up when you fail and run again because if you have that strong enough passion, you're going to get in there. And we can see it uh, with all of these uh, four candidates. Um, Jerry ran a um, very challenging and uh, vivid uh, city council race, and it was a very controversial um, race. But again, when I said that, you run for school board education, your resume looks for school board. He says, no, 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 I, I don't want to want to do that. Naomi said that, you know, um, yeah, I want to run, but I'm not sure. He says, no, 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 your mentors would not allow you, and that we knew that it was just time uh, to run and everything. Um, I'm just going to take one or two questions because time is running uh, short. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Um, I think in general they are, and uh, I think a majority of people, especially in the, the Bay Area in California, and uh, people are very friendly and a welcome minority and welcome Asian. And, um, but I do see some people, some like an email I got, uh, like someone called me communist, uh, you know, <laughs> and uh, s uh, even some party group. And they call me like this Chinese run for this, and uh, I just brush it off, just ignore them. Don't get you know. Don't you may feel a little bit off, you feel offended, but don't spend too much time on them. They they are the minority. I think uh, like my district is big. There's a, a quarter million people, 130,000 uh, voters is huge, and uh, there's only less than 10 percent of Asian. So my advice is just, uh, you know, majority of people, I think they are okay. I mean, they are, they are not against you. But to be frank with, I do worry about my last name. I talk with my friends, you know, everyone can, can tell from my last name, I'm a Chinese. So I do worry about a little bit, but uh, from the turnout, I think it's uh, good. And uh, people was, at least in this area, there's a few people who just ignore them. And um, majority of people, I think, they are fired. They treat us good. And uh, like for my endorsement, uh, and, uh, no, 
I have tons of endorsement. I have one endorsement page, like a majority of that, uh, the Saramon City Council, the school district board, the uh, uh, Danville City Council, even NTS City Council, the County Board of Education, the Community College Board, they all endorse me Is that my opponent. So Andy is absolutely correct, is that um, your name is very important, maybe your first name or your surname. For example, my surname is Wong, is obviously a very typical Cantonese last name, and Gilbert is as typical English as you can get. So I made a strategic decision to put Gilbert bigger than my last name, and I did get a lot of criticism <laughs> for that, and everybody gets it now. Um, but the thing is that it's very important to acknowledge your heritage, but also acknowledge that your voter base is a white-based voter, even though the Cupertino School District and Fremont New High School District is predominantly serving Asian American students, but their voters is uh, white, and they feel more, um, you know, more easier to, to vote for like a Naomi or Jerry, uh, Rosa's more Hispanic, uh, Andy and Gilbert's very um, English, but these are strategies and messaging that you have to think about what the voters want. And it's really sad today that um, folks from India, from Pakistan, they want to keep their uh, name, first name and last name. For example, my wife's name is Wing Kwan. I shouldn't use my wife's as example. But if she was to change her name, she has adopted English name Helen, and my last name is Wong, she'll be Helen Wong. She lose her complete identity. So she kept her Chinese name of Wing Kwan, which I'm proud of, but we also know her as Helen Kwan. Um, one last question I want to ask the other three, and kind of uh, go what Andy was saying, is that in Cupertino, Sunnyvale, Saratoga, Los Altos, Santa Clara, and West San Jose, uh, we are an Asian American majority uh, district. But if you look at our administrators, our administrators is predominantly Caucasian. They're very qualified. We uh, love them very much. Um, how do you think that you being an Asian American, dealing with uh, Asian American parents, that how can you bring balance uh, representing the policy of the school district and also doing uh, your job? Jerry? Sure, thanks. And, and you might want to, uh, for yours is a special case because you had a Asian American trustee that got elected to city council. And if you can explain what the dynamics of your remaining trustees and how does ethnicity play a role in picking that candidate? Sure. Um, so basically right now, um, one of the board members, um, the existing board member, the old board had gotten elected to Cupertino City Council. So we're in the process of actually appointing a fifth member of that, um, of our board. So currently we have uh, basically, uh, myself, I'm Chinese, we have a South Asian a board member who was elected and then um, two uh, Caucasian um, board members. So one who was, who's been on the board for about 11 years, another one that's also, uh, that was also newly elected. Um, I think so, so there are sort of two parts here to what Gilbert talked about. One was um, in terms of, um, there is that dichotomy, right? And, and this is one of the things that drove me to want to run is if I, when I go to the district office and I go see the folks that are making the decisions, um, there's a certain set of folks with a certain set of values. Um, I can tell you, for instance, um, two years ago, what was really controversial is human growth development, right? Uh, sex education. And I think there are sort of, I guess, different cultural values that come into play. And so those are things that I think um, having, um, having, I guess, folks that would uh, represent your views would be a good thing. I think, um, and so in talking, I, you know, I get a lot of calls. I've gotten a lot of calls, as you would imagine, from different folks saying that, uh, oh, you should appoint one of these. Uh, we need one of these folks on there. Um, to be honest, I, I tend not to think of it that way. I think one of the really good advice I've gotten is um, I'm on the school board. And at the end of the day, it's about the kids. And so um, I do play my part in sort of educating, um, sort of, or at least um, sharing some of the, I would just say some of the Asian values um, with uh, district administrators and school staff and all that. Um, but then I think in terms of the appointment, um, to be honest, I'm not really looking for um, someone from a particular race, to be honest. I'm, I'm trying to basically find the best person. Um, you know, I have a set of rubrics and I can, you know, I'm not going to get into that here. You can come to our school board meeting on January 31st. That's when we'll make the appointment. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's certainly a, it's something that's very much on my mind that um, when I go into the schools, uh, the students look very different um, than the school staff in the district. And that's something I really need to be cognizant of. Thanks. 
Thank you, Jerry. And for the Fremont Union High School District, for both Rosa and Naomi, um, they had a very interesting race in that they had a uh, Caucasian who was an incumbent for several um, terms and most likely was going to get reelected, which he did. You had um, one candidate who was from mainland China, uh, one candidate who was uh, South Asian, very heavily endorsed, I mean, heavily involved in the school district, got five endorsements from all five uh, trustees, and you had a Korean American, and you had a Japanese um, American. And again, our district's very, very diverse, and we couldn't go anywhere wrong with any of the candidates that we, we, we picked. So going through your head and looking at the dynamics and, and looking at how much uh, Indo-Americans and Chinese American are in our, in our district, does that factor into your strategy of how to get uh, elected, how you did your outreach to be successful that November, November night that you got elected? Well, as I said before, I think represent, visibility and representation is very important. Now, it's also not the only factor, right? And so, um, luckily, with the work that I've done and as a nonprofit executive, I've been able to work across all many different communities. And so, uh, I felt that I had developed relationships in the different communities that um, our school district serves. And so. Um, it wasn't a reach for me to reach out to um, leaders and community members to talk to them about what was happening in there and what they wanted to see. Um, with that said, I think that, um, you know, I, I, I come with um, a different lens in the sense that I come with a social justice lens. That's who I am. Uh, that's what I've worked uh, professionally all my career. And so equity and access is very important to me. And so whenever I look at things, I'm always looking at, are we making sure that all of our students are represented? Are we making sure that all of our students have access? And um, it's not about equality, it's about equity. And so uh, that's what I would be looking at. And, and, and that was my platform and my message is that I wanted to ensure that that was going to be happening. Um, and so I think as, um, uh, Asian American who has, um, whose family has lived in this country, I have a very um, historical background um, uh, from my family, but also having been a social worker who have worked with refugees and immigrants, I really understand, you know, what um, the community is facing today and what's happening socially and politically um, with our communities. And so, um, now I lost my train of thought. But anyways, uh, those are all the things that I would be looking at in my decision making and making sure that um, all Thank of you, our Danny. students are safe. Thank you. Rosa? Okay, so I'd like to mention about two things. I mean, including the previous question about the, how the district is doing. Uh, okay, for campaigning first, uh, I've made, I mean, several language flyers, Chinese, Spanish, English, Korean. So I tried to reach out, uh, you know, many different, of people, I mean, different ethnicity people. So including, I mean, my neighbors, I mean, majority they are uh, not, not Asian, actually. And they are really, I mean, supportive too. Uh, because I have a really, I mean, my priority is uh, students' mental and emotional well-being. So, you know, I mean, no matter what, I mean, their ethnicity is, it is really um, mm, critical, they think, and that they really agree with, I mean, my priority. So I thought uh, it is it is helpful actually, and that and I major in educational psychology, and I talk about um, well how we can improve. I mean, I was thinking, I mean, how we can improve. I mean, to make more. I mean, uh, trial uh, to you know. I mean, to let them have you know happy you know school life, and that one was helpful. And uh, okay, and then. Um, for, you know, uh, as I mentioned before, I mean, uh, I was, uh, I had a perspective as a parent, not just Asian American, because I'm current parents of the district, and then that helped too. And the second one is, I mean, the district-wide, uh, we uh, officially started our term on December 10th. And after that, um, we have many, I mean, <laughs> really, I mean, thick doc uh, documents, I mean, to cover, I mean, to read and to study. And I got to know more uh, 
about I mean the district and what they are doing, and it was I mean really learning experience, and I'm really I mean feel honored to get to know more about the district and how the public education system is, and I was very impressed on um, how much effort they put in and all the you know small you know policies and you know a curriculum and all those all all those stuff so as a parent actually i was really happy i mean how they are really doing i mean well and they i mean how much they put their efforts and i think our uh, district leadership they are you know majority they are caucasian but they are really well aware that the majority of students in our district is asian american so they also know i mean the needs of i mean the understanding of the asian american students too so i think i'm gonna uh, uh, you know, read a lot about the di what the, uh, the district is doing, and then ask questions, and then let uh, I mean remind them uh, of our Asian American students' I mean, needs. So I think that is uh, my job as a school board member and bridging I mean the community and the district leadership. So. Thank you very much, Rosa. Yes, you can hear that it's very important that if you look at the mission statement for Contra Costa Community College District, Fremont New High School District, Cupertino uh, Union School District, and even me at Foothill De Anza Community College District, in our mission statement, the word diversity is put in there. And that really represents our school district since we have a huge uh, uh, student body that is people of color that we as public policy makers must need to make sure that is also inclusive in our mission statement, maybe Caucasians, Latin Americans, or uh, African Americans or Asian Americans. Secondly, what I heard is that there's other people who don't have English as their first language, and you need to take advantage of getting your messaging uh, maybe in Chinese or in Hindi or in Japanese or in Korean or Spanish uh, to reach out there. Of course, that takes money, but we're very fortunate to live in the Bay Area where we can have Channel 26 television that has multilingual uh, languages or to have uh, newspapers that prints and other media, which some of you have also take uh, advantage other than uh, direct mail. But the most important thing is that if you have a lot of experience or very little experience in campaigning, that if you start early or start uh, um, at the very last minute, that it can be done. But looking at both the city council and the school board panel, I just see the passion and the personality. And that's what it really takes, is that having that candidate go in front door to door, talking to that chancellor, talking to that city manager, talking to the community members, and say that I have the passion and I want to run. So anyone in this room can do it too, and I see a lot of mentors out there. So make sure that you uh, talk to a mentor or talk to some friends. And um, as, uh, as the other moderator said, Anthony, is that it's very important that you, we gotta have a seat at the table. Um, with that, I want to give a huge applause for this uh, school trustee uh, panel.